So let's begin discussing the system's development life cycle, sometimes called the SDLC. This is a, a major theme and topic that is repeated throughout the book, so it's quite important. What is a systems development life cycle? The systems development life cycle is sometimes described as a cradle to grave process, a set of phases, tasks, activities, and deliverables that attempt to put a structure on the overall process of systems development. That is, it puts a framework on what everyone needs to do in order to successfully plan, analyze, design, and ultimately implement a successful large-scale organizational information systems development project. So how do systems get built? Well, the SDLC consists of phases, planning, analysis, design, implementation, steps within each of those phases, and techniques that are used within the steps, within the phases, in order to create formal deliverables, uh, written documents, analysis documents, design documents, that attempt to specify how this information system will be built. Now, note that it's a secular, a secular process, cyclical process. Um, note also there are different versions or flavors of the system development life cycle. Remember I said it is a cradle to grave process and the grave part of that description suggests that at some point information systems that are being built today will become obsolete and will have to be scrapped and replaced. Now in the SDLC version that's used in the Dennis, Wixom, and Roth textbook, there are four phases, planning, analysis, design, and implementation. Some of the other versions have a fifth phase, maintenance, which is often the longest phase and the one that is the most resource intensive. Some other versions of the system development lifecycle also has a security phase, a network security phase, distributed system security phase, often um, interspersed just before, just after implementation. So how does this work? Well, there are, as we mentioned, the phases that consist of steps, techniques, activities, and deliverables. Each phase has one or more formal deliverables that must be developed submitted and approved by the approval committee before you can proceed to the next phase. So let's begin by discussing the planning phase. The planning phase is the first phase and that's where the project is initiated. How will, how will the system contribute to the organization's future success? There may be prepared a system request and some sort of feasibility aspect, feasibility analysis, that examines key aspects of the proposed project. Technical feasibility, that is, can we build it? And economic feasibility, will the system when implemented actually provide some sort of return on, the in, on investment, some sort of business value that will, that will be returned to the company? Organizational feasibility, if we build it, will people actually use it? Will it be successful in its use? The system request is the key deliverable from the planning phase. Now, once a system request is approved, the project manager will develop a work plan, which is also a key deliverable. Phase two is the analysis phase. Who will build it? What will be built? Where will it be built? When will it be used? But the, the really the key criterion, the key element of the analysis phase is requirements. What are the business and technical requirements that we must address? 
what will this information system do? So typically the steps involved are to determine an analysis strategy, to collect and analyze requirements, to prepare and present a system proposal. Are you redoing an existing system or are you going to build an entirely new one? This question is, is addressed in the first step, determining analysis strategy. Now, collecting and analyzing the requirements, this is key. And you must gather the requirements in a proactive, detailed way, including interviews, questionnaires. The system concept will be built on some sort of a requirement statement and on, on the basis of business analysis models that we'll look at as we go through this course. How will the business operate if the new system is developed? Finally, system proposals will be prepared and presented. The system proposal is a key deliverable and it combines all of the above into one document. Eventually, there will be a go, no go decision made by the sponsor and the steering committee. The system proposal describes the requirements that the new system should satisfy. The third phase is design. Design answers the question, how? How will the system be built? Specifically, how will the system operate in terms of hardware, software, and network infrastructure? What will the user interface look like? What forms and reports will be used? What are the specific programs and applications and files and database structures that will need to be put into place? A design strategy will be determined and the system components will be designed. This includes the architecture, which is hardware, software, and network, the interface, how the user actually interacts with the system and moves through the system, database and file specifications, and finally programs, computer programs, which must be designed and the applications that are needed must be documented. The implementation phase is the fourth phase and the final phase according to the Dennis textbook version of the SDLC. Where is the system built or perhaps purchased? Not all large-scale organizational information systems are developed in-house. They can also be outsourced where you hire another firm to develop them. And in some cases, like ERP systems, they can be purchased off the shelf. There are, are at least three steps in the implementation phase. System construction, in which the system is actually built, integrated, put together, and tested. System installation, which is the process by which the old system is turned off and the new one is turned on. Sometimes this is called conversion, converting to the new system. There are several ways that this can be done. It always, always, always involves training. You must factor training into this approach. Finally, the third step, ongoing system support. A support plan must be developed. Sometimes this extends into a fifth phase, according to other authors, called maintenance. There must also be post-implementation reviews of how well the system is working and some way to ID change requirements. These are part of the third step, ongoing system support. 